So Lori went through a lot of, you know, different use cases within research administration. But just to get started, you can do a lot of basic things right now. Um, this is very good at writing emails. That's a, that, a lot of times this is the first place people start is writing emails. I know it's the first place I started. You know, I remember, you know, right when ChatGPT came out, I presented on this to, to our research administration staff here at the university. And I said, you know, write me, write me an email to a faculty member, um, you know, Jim Smith, you know, I just made up a name that's, uh, you know, that lets them know that they're consistently late on their proposal submissions. And that this is, you know, creating a problem for us. Be, be nice, but be very direct, you know, and it spit out like this really great email. It, it changed the term. It says, Dear Professor Smith, you know, it knew, knew to appropriately title it. It knew, you know, because you're getting these proposals in late, you know, we may not have enough chance to review them fully, and this could impact our institutional rep, uh, our institutional um, rep. And you know, there's a lot of these other considerations that it takes into account that you may not have thought about writing an email, and you just don't have to think about it. You don't have to think about the structure of the email. You don't need to think about how do I word this so it's not it doesn't sound too like this in this direction or too like this in another direction. So very very good at writing emails. Or if you've even started writing an email and you have it, you could paste it in there and say, you know, make suggestions or edits to this email to make it sound uh, more professional and take any anger I have out of it. Because <laughs> um, I'm sure everybody has has written those emails where they probably shouldn't send it. Um, but AI is very good at toning that down a little bit. Um, and it's very good at summarizing emails too. I mean, especially if you're on an email string with like 20 other previous emails and you're just coming into it, it takes forever to read through that whole string and try to get a context of what that last email is saying. So you can just cut and paste that in there. Or, you know, if you've got Copilot for um, Office 365, there's just a button at the top that it says, summarize this, and it will summarize the whole string for you and give you the key key points and and maybe what you're supposed to do. Um, like I said earlier, mocking up ideas, you know, whether that is a dashboard, whether that's a new form, you know, whether it's a flow chart, you know, maybe maybe you want to make your office more efficient and you want to create a new workflow. You know, this is very good at mocking up those ideas. Just brainstorming in general. I mean, this is your thought partner. Um, off to the side. So you're not just asking it one question. You're you're following up. You're just like you were uh, an actual person. You know, it gives you an idea. You can say, uh, "Yeah, I kind of like where you're going with this, but but I I think we should change this, or I think we should go in this direction." And then it will go along with you. And and it's really good at just brainstorming different ideas. Um, another really good concept is just taking really complex concepts and making them easy. Something you don't understand, making it understand. Say, um, okay, here is the science that this researcher is doing. Explain it to me like a 10-year-old kid. And it is very good at, 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 at dumbing it down for the average person to be able to understand what's going on. Um, same thing, you know, with any, you know, I, I used it to interpret MRI results that a doctor gave me. I had no idea what any of the words meant. I fed it into chat GBT and I'm like, oh yeah, that makes sense. And then I went to the doctor's office and he said, do you under, do you know what's going on based on your results? I said, yeah, chat GBT told me. And he said, what did it tell you? And I gave him the answer and he's like, yep, that's pretty much it. <laughs> so uh, very good at taking complex concepts and making them easy. Um, and then, you know, just like with this presentation, it's very good at creating presentations, you know, laying out thoughts in a, in a good manner, creating images, creating, you know, formatting, things like that. It's, this AI is just perfect for playing around with. Um, don't be afraid. I, I, I hear so many people that are just like, I don't know where to start, or I, I'm afraid, I don't know what to do. 
just start, just start asking questions. Just like if you met a new person, um, it's, but this AI is not going to judge you. It's not going to think that you asked a dumb question. Just ask it all the stupid questions you want because um, it's going to, it's going to answer them, you know, without the snark that you, you would get from somebody else. So um, a good piece of advice that I've read, you know, when I first started doing this, um, if anybody, if anybody's ever read any of the blogs from Ethan Mollick, um, very good at AI concepts, you know, he, I would definitely recommend that. Um, but he said to use it for at least 10 hours. Um, it's, you, you can't grasp the full potential until you've used it enough. 10 hours, you know, may or may not be correct, but use it often. And then you will start to see, you'll start getting these little, little thoughts in your head about, oh, I think I could use it for this. Let's try it like that. Um, and, you know, it's just like anything. It takes practice. So, so use it. Um, you may not utilize it at first, but keep using it. Keep using it. And get <laughs> Thank you.